This is Twit. According to Microsoft, there is a lot of interest in Windows 10. The company's Windows Insider program hit 1 million registrants over the weekend. Now, joining the Windows Insider program doesn't necessarily mean that a user will install a preview, but currently, it's the only way to try out Windows 10, so the numbers definitely matter. Microsoft also said it's received over 200,000 pieces of feedback through the Windows native feedback application and has gotten some interesting t statistics rather out of that, too. Half of all installs are running on virtual machines, for example, meaning that most of its users have installed Windows 10 natively, and most users are using seven or more apps per day. The team promises to continue to revise and improve the OS before its official launch. Samsung's making a pretty big claim. The company says that it has developed 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi technology that closes the current gap between theoretical and actual Wi-Fi speeds. Now, Samsung says that the technology is capable of data speeds of up to 4.6 gigabits per second. That's like 575 megabytes per second, which is about five times faster than the current ceiling for Wi-Fi speeds for consumer electronics devices, which is about 866 megabits per second or 108 megabytes per second. So that's a huge increase. How did Samsung do this? The company says that it solved the speed killing issues that surround millimeter waves, which travel by line of sight, and that's why things like cement walls and other obstacles end up being an issue for connection speeds. Instead, Samsung's using wide coverage beam forming antenna, that's their term, not mine, and micro beam forming control technology, and the company expects commercialization of this unlicensed 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi band spectrum as early as next year. Excited for a MacBook Air with Retina Display at Apple's event this Thursday? Don't hold your breath, reports Recode, citing sources familiar with Apple's plans. Recode, which has a pretty good track record about this stuff as of late, says that while a Retina MacBook Air may in fact be in the works, it's not going to be shown off at Thursday's event. That event will only focus on new iPads, a new high-res iMac, and OS X Yosemite. So, on to the iPad specifically. Component photo leaks uh, that leaked over the weekend show an A8X chip, which is similar to the A8 chip that's in the uh, iPhone 6, but probably overclocked, and Touch ID button technology may be making their way to the new iPads. Both of those rumors are not too surprising. And more photos published by blog apple.club.tw shows what looks like two gigabytes of RAM for app memory, which would double what's in the current gen iPad Air and make for more powerful, all sorts of stuff, multitasking. The iPad update is also expected to include Touch ID for use with Apple Pay and possibly an improved display for outdoor viewing, which would be awesome, and maybe even a gold option. At this point, I really need a gold iPad or I'm going to be pretty bummed. Before it filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy last week, Sapphire supplier GT Advanced Technologies had made a $578 million deal with Apple, that was last year, to step up manufacturing of the scratch-resistant material used on the iPhone to protect uh, not only Touch ID, the fingerprint sensor, but also the rear camera lens with Sapphire because it's nice and it's, it's very strong. And on two of three Apple Watch models that are due out next year, all going to have Sapphire. So it's very unfortunate that things have gone the way that they've gone for GT as far as Apple's concerned. However, court filings made by GT have not only revealed that Apple imposes a whopping $50 million penalty per occurrence for leaking any information about an upcoming unannounced Apple product. But GT has also argued in court, this was last week, that even more information about its relationship with Apple should be published. The company has hinted that the terms of Apple's contract were unreasonable, uh, has referred to them as oppressive and burdensome. GT has also asked for permission to disclose the details of its agreement in the interest of creditors and equity holders and other stakeholders, as well as to ensure an open open, transparent, and fair process. It sounds ugly so far. Cloud storage continues to not really be rock solid as a storage option. Yep, are you getting that feeling yet? Dropbox has confirmed the bug in some older versions of its desktop apps ended up deleting files of some of its customers who turned on Selective Sync, which limits cloud syncing to certain folders. Now, this could happen after a crash or a forced reboot, but at least a few users said 
uh, reported that they lost years worth of content, you know, in some cases, photos or, or things that had not been backed up in other places, which is, I don't know about you, that's my worst nightmare. Dropbox says that it is restoring files where it can, and it's released fixed versions of its apps. It's preventing older apps from working and then putting more safeguards in place to prevent something like this from happening again. Affected users are also receiving emails that offer a year's worth of Dropbox Pro. The service is basically a consolation prize.